Today, I'm gonna to be beautifying my Sony PlayStation 5 with the brand's Dark Plates 2.0. Let's go ahead and get into it. Welcome everyone to the Derpzilla channel. And for today, I'm taking a look at D Brands Dark Plates 2.0 for my Sony PlayStation 5. The great thing about the Dark Plates 2.0 is you have a wide array of different color combinations you can go with to fine tune the overall look of your PlayStation 5. For me, I went with the Damascus metallic looking skin, which you can kind of see right here. Very nice looking. But one thing they do note is it may have radio interference, I guess, because of the foil and the reflective material they use for these skins. So they do throw in at no extra charge an all black version that does not possibly suffer from that same issue. Now, as I mentioned, you have a number of different options you can do with your kit. The base deck plates themselves, which just replace the front and back actual physical plastic uh, side pieces is about $60 currently. The skin adds another almost $10. And then you can also add in a lighting setup right here, which is I think another $15. Now it's really not an actual light itself, it's just kind of a sticker that goes over the built-in PlayStation 5 lighting that'll have it glow then the color that you go with that is kind of a shine through vinyl material of some sort. They do toss in a couple microfibers possibly. And just to show you guys real quick what the skin kind of looks like applied, here is the Damascus one that I went with on my Steam Deck and you can see super shiny, super cool looking, love this skin. That's why I went with it again, but in case it doesn't work out, which I'm not really worried about, this is what the blacked out version looks like. So still looks great, not quite as majestic, but uh, still very nice as you can see. Now we'll go ahead and get this over on my workbench and we'll unbox everything and get this thing installed on my PlayStation and then we'll take a look at how it looks and how it all comes together. Here is everything that I received with my deck plates 2.0 order. I threw in a few microfiber cloths. I have my Damascus metallic skin right here. Looks super nice. And then the freebie they threw in just in case I have any issues, which I don't foresee having, but maybe you can see a side by side to just how the light plays off of these two skins differently. And, uh, yeah, I think both of them look great, but I will be going with the metallic one that I intentionally ordered. Of course, now we have my LED overlay vinyl. I went with red to kind of tie in a black and red theme. And as you can see, nothing super complex here. It's not an actual LED light itself. This will just sit on top of the PlayStation 5 LED light, and then it'll give us a nice effect of when it glows and does all the cool things in rest mode and when it's powered on. Move that off to the side, and then you have this very nice hard case where the actual dark plates themselves reside in. And I mean, this is a pretty quality case. I mean, this case itself is almost the price of admission for the deck plates, but very nice. Opens up, splits open in the middle. They throw in a pretty nice hard cardboard uh, little card here. They have a link to your D brand how. Uh, website where they have a ton of install videos for pretty much all their products. Uh, so if you want to see their official install videos, dbrand.com slash how. And then we have a nice little little foam piece here. We're actually going to be using this later on to lay down and work on so we don't scratch up our PlayStation or our skins. And then of course we have the plate itself. Here is one. Note that it does have this very cool um, cut out for your fan with a built-in kind of a dust guard. And the cool thing about the dust guard is it is removable. You just have to spin it somehow. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but uh, it spins allegedly. Um, maybe. I don't know. You have to kind of set it down to spin it. Well, there we go. There we go. <laughs> so it pops off. Kind of hard, you have to be on a flat surface. I'm kind of angled here. And then you can clean it if you have any dust on here and then you can just reapply it, stick it back on the thing, preferably a flat surface. And then you kind of just spin to lock it into place. It's kind of a, a little bit of a hassle because you got to get that lip under, under there. 
and then okay there we go it's locked in actually it doesn't really spin very much just a little bit to lock in place and then of course we have another little foam insert piece and the second plate right here so now we have two plates both of them have the built-in dust guards and the cutouts for the fans and if you look really close it has the binary code written on the inside of the deck plates note it does not have any kind of playstation or sony branding on it uh, that was the issue i guess with the with the uh, deck plate 1.0 so we have now the 2.0 to not have any potential conflicts with sony we'll go ahead and move the box out of the way and we can lay everything out here a little bit easier there we go we have the two deck plates we have all the other pieces the skins we have the light overlay and i can bring the playstation 5 over here we can get that thing the old plates removed take a look at how they compare to the d brand deck plates which i mean these feel equivalent to oem quality i mean this isn't some cheap you know 3d printed um piece of plastic this is a well molded quality piece pretty obvious we have the playstation 5 now laying here on my workbench and we're gonna go ahead and get these uh, OEM side plates removed so we can get the uh, D-Brand deck plate 2.0 installed. Very easy to get these plates off. You're just gonna lift up by the logo here and we're gonna push the plate to the left and it should uh, release those little clips. There we go. And you can see these are the little clips I'm talking about and they kind of hook into place and these little hole nubs and then that kind of gets these removed. And then for the other side, you're gonna lift the closer corner to you and do the same thing, push it off. And then note the little hooks and everything. And it does have the little Sony controller, little icons here, pretty cool. I wanted to show a very quick comparison between the D brand and the Sony plates. The most obvious difference right off the bat that you can see is the cutout for the fan on the D brand. This should give us a little bit better cooling efficiency, which is always a good thing. The Sony, on the other hand, has a little logo cutout, which really does nothing. Now, another big difference is the curve of the edges of the D-Brand. Very big, gradual curve on this front edge here, and even a little bit of a curve down here on the bottom, and then a little bit of a curve here, versus the Sony, which is just pretty much sharp edges, and one of the probably one of the reasons that the Sony PlayStation 5 kind of looks like uh, an alien appliance of some sort. The D-Brand, on the other hand, should look much more streamlined, so I'm excited to see what this looks like once we get it installed. I went ahead and laid down the included foam insert, and I have my PlayStation 5. I'll go ahead and just lay it down on that foam insert, which is perfectly shaped to fit the entire PlayStation 5, which is always nice. Now we have the D-Brand deck plate right here, and you just want to make sure you match the uh, corner. So, of course, you have this gradual curve right here, gradual curve on the deck plate. Notice the orientation of the little latch mechanisms and then the cutouts. So they'll actually clip into the right. So we're gonna go ahead and take this. You're gonna drop it on there and you should feel it kind of catching a little bit. You might wanna give a little pressure around here just to help make sure to guide those clips in. And we're gonna to wanna to then push to the right and it should clip in like that. I've flipped my PlayStation to the other side and we have the remaining plate to install. Same deal as the other side, you're just gonna kinda of lay it in place. You should feel it kinda of just catch a little bit where you can't really move it too much side to side and you wanna just apply a little downward pressure up around this region here to help guide those clips into place. You can take one finger, brace it on the top part of the PlayStation and then you're gonna use your hand or whatever to then push the plate into place like so and you should hear a nice good clip. Now. If you've only ordered the uh, plates themselves and no skin, then that is it. Your install is done. It took all of, what, one minute, two minutes maybe? Super easy and it's a completely different looking device. Now, if you have a skin such as what I have here, we're gonna go ahead and proceed to the installation of the skins. Now, I have the two-piece skin. So the longer skin, which you can see right here, that will actually install to the front of your PlayStation. So it'll go all the way down and wrap around the top. Now, if you have the bottom piece as well, 
this actually is a skin that you will not see if you actually have your PlayStation vertically mounted, but it'll actually install here on the bottom. It'll look great if your PlayStation is a horizontal mount, but for me, I'll vertically mount, so the skin is pretty much pointless, but I'm gonna install it anyways because I have it. I've zoomed out as far as I could. Apologize for the messy workspace, but I wanted to be able to capture everything in a single uh, frame. And the first thing you wanna do is give a good wipe down. If you have a, like a light mixture of alcohol, water, you can use that, but you wanna remove any fingerprints, any kind of dust or anything that may uh, cause issues with adhesion of your skin. Give everything nice and wipe down. Mine looks much more scratched up than I recall. Uh, one of the perks of having uh, children, they add to all of your stuff in a loving way. Now I have my skin orientated with the uh, PlayStation. As you can see, you have cutouts for your power button, your uh, different ports, and then of course the overall shape of the skin should conform with your PlayStation. Now the trick is you don't want to peel the entire skin off with one go and then just kind of try to finagle it on there, probably have it stick and cause different issues. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna peel off the end here. Make sure your hands are clean too. You don't want uh, dirty, grimy hands causing issues with uh, getting oils or funk on your skin before you actually lay it down, causing also issues with it actually sticking properly. So what we wanna do is we wanna just peel off and fold back the paper like so, and you're gonna line up the ports with the skin That'll help it give us an overall nice alignment. I'm gonna go ahead and get the skin laid out. Hopefully, I don't mess it up. Front skin is applied. My battery actually died <laughs> halfway through, so if you noticed a weird kind of cut jump, it's because I had to change batteries. Always something. Anyways, it went on super smooth. It seemed like it's uh, on very nice, no issues applying it. Just kind of make sure you, you might have to untack it. Don't really tack it all the way down and press on it until you get it all lined up. You saw me working it back and forth. Just to, you know, it's kind of hard the way I have <laughs> this up on the workbench and the way I'm trying to film it where I can't really see it straight on. So I had to kind of keep looking and re-tacking it until I got it pretty much how I wanted it. And then I went over it, pushed it down, tacked it in, and you want to apply some pressure all the way around to make sure it's on nice and bonded. And then I went over with uh, my microfiber just to kind of wipe everything, help add a little bit more without potentially scratching the skin, which you don't want to do. So don't be wiping it down with like some rough paper towel or anything like that. And if you can see also where the little impressions for the logo for like the power button. You can kind of push extra hard on there and you can actually see some of the actual button logo pushing through the skin just a little bit. Um, you know, if you want that, you can just apply a little bit extra pressure to get that to show through and check out that freaking super sweet metallic glow. I mean, I think it's awesome. Very nice. Love how this thing turned out just like I love this skin on my Steam Deck and pretty much, pretty much anything, I'm a fan of this, this look. So there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and flip her upside down, kind of balancing, not too bad. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm gonna apply the bottom skin, or I guess you could say this is the side slash bottom, but you wanna line everything up. It only will go one way. And they even have a cutout right here, which is very nice for your serial number or whatever that is. I think that's a serial number. So you just want to make sure it goes on like this. It can go really only go on one way. And for this one, because it's not super long, it's a little bit dusty. You can go ahead and peel the entire skin off like so. And here we go. And you just want to make sure you line it up just like the front skin. Everything lined up perfectly. I'm going to have to go on my tippy toes here.
bottom slash side skin is now installed. Also looks great. Everything lined up very nice, perfectly cut out. Even comes very nice connection point right here. Check that out. Finally, we have the final light strip overlays. I saved this for last, uh, simply because probably most people won't be getting this. This is kind of an extra add-on above and beyond the skin and the deck plates, but uh, you will need to have the deck plate removed. So if you are planning to do all of these, go ahead and install this before you install your deck plate. But if you've already installed it because you followed my video in order, <laughs> my fault, you can go ahead and just remove it. Same way as you remove the OEM plate, it just pops right off in about 30 seconds. Now we have your two light strips. They will be specific for uh, each side. Hopefully I have the right one. You kind of just line them up. It looks like this one goes. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start at the very corner of, this is the light strip right here, the built-in LED. It wraps all the way around. It goes actually down to the front, but these strips actually only looks like they cover the top portion. And I think that's all that really glows through anyways. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and peel off just a, just a bit of this, as you can see here. It's just a very thin piece of vinyl. And we'll see if we can get this to line up. I think that should do it on this side. You kind of want to uh, make sure you don't have the vinyl protruding out, but you also don't want it to be too far inward. Otherwise, you're probably gonna have light bleed out. That's not gonna be diffused by this vinyl overlay piece here. Uh, I believe I got the full length. You saw me actually reapply some of here because it looked like I had it a little bit too far inward over on this side. And the good thing about this is, um, we should be able to remove it without damaging it. If we go ahead and plug it in, it lights up and we notice some white lights bleed over or an area that uh, just doesn't look quite right. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, same way. Just be real careful with it and don't really push down hard on it until you think you got it in the perfect spot. Hopefully that's good. We'll go ahead and get this plate put on. We'll see if this lights up as it should, and then we can wrap this up. It's super dark, but I wanted to show how she lights up. Now, this side looks pretty good. This is the left side facing it. Very nice red glow, but I did notice a little bit of white spillover right here on the right side. So I'm gonna pull this plate off slide that over just a little bit and I should be able to get that completely covered. So one thing you want to do before you actually button everything up and you have it all put back in your entertainment center is just double check your work and you may just need, you know, make some minor adjustments and get it looking hundred percent. After the adjustment, as you can see, left side, solid red still, right side, Trying to focus much better. Just had to re kind of move it up. You just want to get it right to that edge so you don't have any of that bleed. It's not going to be 100% perfect because it is an overlay and it is kind of a weird angle, but this should be pretty good. And as you can see, the light does only goes down so far. 
so you don't have to worry about the strip not being the full length of the LED just because the uh, plates themselves don't let the light bleed out. Thanks everyone for watching the video. Hopefully you found it informative and useful for your own installation if you do go with these uh, D-Brand Deck Plate 2.0. Overall, super pleased with how it turned out. I think it looks amazing. The installation was a breeze, no issues with anything, uh, no weird air bubbles, no wrinkles in the skin. The plates went on good. And really the only kind of maybe hang up for some people will be with those light um, vinyl overlays that go over the LED light. You might have a little bleed through if you don't get that perfectly right up on the edge. So just be very careful with that and you probably will have no problems. I showed the, uh, the, the revamped uh, pit my ride look to my son and he thought it looked amazing. So two thumbs up from him and two thumbs up for me with how this turned out. Overall, high quality, the price super reasonable. As I mentioned earlier, 60 bucks or so for the deck plates themselves. I think it's another $10, nine or $10 for the skin and then another 15 for the uh, overlays for your LEDs. Um, most people probably won't go with that because it's kind of just a little extra flair that you may not need. But uh, overall, super happy, happy I, I went with this. Stay tuned for a future video. I actually have the skins from Deeprand for my Xbox X. And uh, if you've seen my previous videos, link probably floating up here somewhere, uh, I've actually installed the kill switch and their skins onto my Steam decks and those have held up perfectly zero issues with them for over a year so this thing i mean it's not like i'm carrying my ps5 all the time i think this will hold up pretty much the life of my playstation so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you uh like the merch here i have my bucky's super mercado t-shirt it's on my store zilla.com shop check those out with a ton of other uh zilla and other weird themed shirts and other items that you may be interested in. So check that out. Hopefully, if you guys enjoyed the video as well, feel free to subscribe, drop a comment. Happy to answer any questions on this, really anything else. My channel is kind of all over the place. So I pretty much answer questions on everything from life to fun stuff. So I'll catch you guys on the next video. Have a good one. Peace. Peace.